So today I'm going to share with you 3 backtesting tips and make as much profits as possible We're going to talk about that today coming up next The difference between a very successful trader and a trader who jumps from one holy grail to another holy grail is just one thing. The professional trader would back test the system and they would focus on that just one system. The loser trader, they would just go out there and then try to find the next better thing that doesn't even exist. So the first tip for you to back test is you've got to back test base on your trading method. What do I mean by trading method? Are you trading manually or are you trading using a robot? Because these two different things is going to determine how you should backtest. So if you're a manual trader, okay, meaning that you trade manually without relying on a EA, re without relying on a robot, when you are trading manually, you need to also backtest manually meaning that if you are auto trading then you can backtest using a software or a robot okay why is this so important it's because if you're a manual trader but you backtest using a robot your skill as a trader would not increase at all how do you execute your trades when you don't even know where to buy or sell, where to set your TP, where to set your stop loss. Because the bad thing about auto trading, auto bet testing is that even though the robots do everything faster for you, yes, but your experience as a trader wouldn't increase. And you know that as a trader, your experience and your skill is the number one commodity for you to make money from trading. And the other thing about auto bet testing is that a lot of robots, they will pick future data into their backtesting consideration. What do I mean by that? For example, if you want to backtest on 1st of January, your robot would pick some data from 2nd of January and then incorporate it into 1st of January. So your data becomes skewed and then make you into thinking that, okay, this robot is pretty profitable. This system is profitable when it's not. Now, in order to really gain a good experience, when you're backtesting, you need to backtest it the right way. So this comes the second tip, which is backtest as if you are trading live. Now, how do you backtest as if you're trading live? Let's say, for example, again, you want to backtest 1st of January. Okay, you want to backtest this day. What a lot of traders do, this is a common mistake that a lot of people make, is that they will scroll their chart in such a way that they can see the price for the whole entire of first gen and also they can see probably a few days later. They can see second gen, if they zoom up more, they can see third gen, fourth gen. The main gist is they can see what's going to happen after first gen. Let's say if I want to backtest first gen 6am data, they would scroll the chart all the way in such a way that they can see 6am data all the way to Next day, 6 a.m. data, they also can see what's going to happen in the next day. Now, this phenomenon is what you call the hindsight bias. If you can see what's going to happen later on, your mind wouldn't be able to learn properly. Because when you are trading live, in the live market, you are not able to see what's going to happen tomorrow, a few hours later, if you are a day trader. You can't see what's going to happen next. So if you backtest in such a way that you can see what's going to happen next, you aren't really trading live. You are just scanning, reading the charts. For you to backtest properly, you need to scroll your chart in such a way that scroll all the way to the right, then have your 6th of January, 1st Jan over here, your 31st December over here, 30th December over here. So in that way, you can't see what's going to happen after 6 a.m. 1st January, you know what I'm saying? And then as you backtest, then you scroll candle by candle, candle by candle. That is the way you should backtest. So the other thing is when you're backtesting like this, you've got to put imaginary buy-sell orders. Just like how you're trading in a live market, 
just like how you're training them all. And also set imaginary TP targets, set your stop loss as if you're really treating life. So if this is the good way, the better way to backtest, why don't people do this? Because again, this is the hard thing to do. When traders come into trading, all they want is do the easy things and then expect their P&L to give them good results. It just doesn't work that way. You want to achieve the top 1% of traders' results, you've got to do what the 99% are not willing to do, which is do the freaking hard things. When I'm backtesting my first year, I made a lot of mistakes when it comes to backtesting too. When I backtest, not only would I have hindsight bias, I will also add more indicators as I backtest. So tip number three is when you're backtesting, don't add more indicators. Now a lot of people, when they're backtesting, they, they see a mistake or they see a losing trade. Then they will add an additional indicator, for, for example, RSI, MACD, whatever that you want to use to justify that loss. And then after that, you go backtest another date, you remove that indicator. When you do that, switching between indicators, there are way too many variables and then your whole entire data is not going to give you the correct results. You wouldn't know at the end of the day whether your system really works or not because you are not sticking to that one system. You are adding additional indicators, you are adding this system, this strategy, that strategy. So what I find this effective is that you've got to keep it as simple as possible. If it doesn't work at the end of your back test, then just remove it. Just don't trade it. Don't trade this system. Create a new system when you back test another time again. I still remember in my first two, three years of trying to create a new system, when I back test, I'll back test the whole entire weekend. Like Saturday, I'll go all in. Sunday, I'll go all in. I'll just stay in my room. I do not think, but just stay in the charts. That's practically how I spend my 20s, mid 20s. I know if you like what you do, it's not really work. You know what I'm saying? I'll back test for eight hours a day, 10 hours a day. That's all I do. And I find that when you do this, it's not very productive because your mind needs to take a break. So the bonus tip for you, backtest and rest. If you do want to backtest the whole entire day, you can backtest for two hours, then you stop. Then go do something else, go to the gym, go swim. After that, come back, continue backtest again. Now, if you feel that backtest is painful for you, try losing money. Would you rather lose money or spend that bit of time over the weekend backtesting? When you backtest one time, this system can last you one year, two years, three years. Now I know that sometimes backtesting is really boring, but you know what? This is what trading is all about. 90% of the time in your trading career, you are studying, you are researching, you are backtesting, you are forward testing. You are training yourself 90% of the time. And only the 10% of the time, you are clicking buy and sell. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people think that, because I'm a trader, that's why I need to click buy and sell. It's not that, it's not that. It involves a lot of hard work, a lot of discipline, a lot of perseverance, a lot of studying that a lot of people don't see, that a lot of people probably won't tell you because who wants to talk about hard work, discipline, all the dry stuff anyway? Like, give me my Maserati. If you want this bad enough, implement these three tips, you'll find that you improve your trading so, so much. So if that, let me know down in the comment section below. How do you normally backtest? Okay, so if that, I'll talk to you in the next episode. Bye.